a lot of what I see is this, where riders are kind of pumping or they're going like too much in a circle motion like this, or they're like pulling back at the wrong time. So you can see how hard it is for her to stay cantering, like when my hands are just doing crazy things. <laughs> and it really is a good picture. Hello everyone, this video is about stop moving your hands all over the place. I don't know about you, but I've had several occasions where I watched a video of myself riding and I was just like, oh my gosh, what are my hands doing? Like they're moving all over the place. I was so embarrassed that I actually put a reminder on my phone that said, stop moving your hands all over the place. And it went off every day before I got on my horse Harvey. So it did help me to stop moving my hands. But in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you because oftentimes it's not about your hands, it's actually about your seat. So let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna demonstrate like the most common mistakes that happen. And so starting off in the trot, a lot of times when people are trotting, you'll see this happen, like where their hands are basically posting along with their seat. And so you can see how this looks pretty ugly. And it's also not nice for your horse because you're not um, able to establish a steady contact. And then at the canter, a lot of what I see is this, where riders are kind of pumping or they're going like too much in a circle motion like this or they're like pulling back at the wrong time. So you can see how hard it is for her to stay cantering, like when my hands are just doing crazy things. And it really isn't a good picture. You're a good girl, Claire. You're a good girl, Claire. Okay, so that's what not to do. Do not look like that when you're riding because Claire here was, she was very tolerant of that, but it's not nice for your horse, especially because we have metal in their mouth. And so when the reins go slack and then you pull on them, that's really uncomfortable for them. So you're moving your hands around too much. What do you do? Step one is actually to think about your seat and riding from your center, because a lot of times if your hands are flying all over the place, it's because your seat is not connected. So the main function of your seat is to follow and absorb the motion of your horse. And what I really like to think about for my seat is my center. So between your belly button and your spine, there's a lot of nerve endings in this area that control like your legs and your upper body. So anytime that I'm riding and I feel out of balance or like I'm bouncing, I really think about this area, pulling my belly button to my spine, getting connected to my horse. And a lot of times you'll find that if you fix your seat, you'll fix your hands. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna start off here just in sitting trot. And so like if in the sitting trot, you're really bouncing and you're not connected to your horse, that's gonna come in your hands and you're gonna be kind of balancing on your hands. So I'm gonna think about my center. I'm gonna move my fingers a little bit. I'm gonna put my hands a little lower there. Good girl. Good girl. And now you see how because I have fixed my seat and I've lowered my center of gravity and I'm sitting down on her, she's much rounder. So same thing at the canner. If, if in the canner, like my butt is kind of doing this where I'm like posting the canner or I'm stiff, that's gonna ricochet up to my shoulders and my hands. So your hands are really a reflection of what your seat is doing. If I can sit in and get my seat connected to my horse, as the motion of my seat starts to connect to my horse, then the contact gets steadier 
and then you see my hands on their own solve themselves. Good girl. Ooh. Okay, so that's tip one, is to focus on your seat. Now tip two is that your seat follows the motion of your horse's back, but your hands and your elbows, your elbows have to bend and straighten to follow the nod of your horse's neck. So like when you're at the walk, your horse has a slight nodding motion to their head. So in order to keep a steady contact here in the walk, you see how my elbows are just a little bit bending and straightening to follow the motion of her neck. And so the motion in your elbows really is what allows you to maintain a steady contact. So if I stop following the motion and I'm just rigid in my arm, you see what the rain is doing now, how it's going jerk and it's pulling in her mouth, which is really not comfortable for her. So when you're thinking about fixing your hands and keeping your hands more still, you really want to consider that you want to have a steady contact with your horse's mouth, which means that there needs to be a little bend and straighten in your elbows. And your elbows move the most at the walk and at the canter because that's where there's the most motion in your horse's neck. So let me see if I can do it at the canter. So you see how here my elbows are following the nodding motion of her head. So it's bend and straighten, bend and straighten, bend and straighten, bend and straighten. Good girl. If I lock my elbows, now you see, look at the reins. And if the reins are constantly like slack and pulling, it doesn't give your horse any security. So that's why you really want to have this elastic following motion in your elbows. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is that when you do want to affect your horse, so like if you want your horse to bend a little more or you want your horse to get a bit rounder, use your fingers and your wrist. So oftentimes we just right away resort to pulling back with our elbows and that's a very obvious aid. But if you can just use your fingers and your wrist, it's invisible and it will allow you to still keep your horse's neck soft and keep your hands still. So I hope you like those three tips to keep your hands still. Also check out the description. I'm doing a 30 days to round challenge all about getting your horses round, getting your horses supple and soft in 30 days. It's going to be super fun and I really hope you'll join us. So leave a comment below if you like this video and we'll see you next time. In my brand new 30 days to round challenge, you are going to learn exactly how to get your horse supple through and correctly engaging their hind end and top line. I remember when I first started out riding and I just could not get my horse round. I was really frustrated, so was my horse. In my gut, I knew that I was doing something seriously wrong, but I just didn't know what to do to teach my horse to accept the bit. In 30 days to round, I'm gonna teach you exactly that. Over 30 step-by-step -step exercises where I show you exactly what you need to do to teach your horse to get round. Not only that, but I let you in on a little secret of mine where I show you specific groundwork exercises so that you can teach your horse how to accept the contact and get round before you even get in the saddle. With our private Facebook group, we're going to be supporting you with live Q&A sessions and offering other fun activities to help keep you motivated and give you all of the support and hand-holding that you need to achieve your goal of getting your horse supple, round, soft, and using their top line. But this challenge includes a $10,000 prize fund. That's right, you could win just for teaching your horse to get round and accept the contact. Click the link below and join today. I really look forward to working with you and helping you along in your training journey.